What's up, y'all? It's Dr. Paul with Liberty Hill Comics, where I share my passion and over 40 years of experience comic book collecting, investing, and conservation with you. Today, we're continuing a short conservation project for this copy of Fantastic Four number 17, published by Marvel Comics in August of 1963 by Stan the Man Lee and Jack King Kirby. It's 60 years old now and needs a little bit of our help making sure it survives the next 60 years, so we're going to perform a conservation with a very light touch. In episode 1, we did a thorough assessment and documentation of the condition of the comic before we begin any conservation work, and we developed our game plan for this conservation project. This comic book is in pretty good shape, but we found a few flaws that we'd like to address including several small tears to the cover, some cover water stains, a spine roll, a larger tear to the center fold, and a large disruption of the gloss on the back cover, in addition to general soiling and moderate tanning of the cover. Our game plan includes disassembly of the comic, dry clean of the cover, a quick wet clean of the cover and the center fold with deacidification and chemical stabilization, and archival tear seals using Japanese paper and wheat paste. Importantly, we'll do this work with a goal of achieving no noticeable difference in the paper quality between the center fold and the rest of the inner wraps. Then, we'll treat the loss of gloss on the back cover, reassemble this comic book, refold it, removing the spine roll while we're at it, and give it a final press. This project will be complete when we document the final results. In episode 2, we remove the staples, taking care to preserve the orientation and location of each, and disassemble the comic book. We always store the interior pages in mylar while we are working on the cover, and vice versa. We completed the dry cleaning of the cover, obverse and reverse, most of which was done off camera. At that point, our cover and centerfold were prepared for wet cleaning, deacidification, and paper mending operations. In episode 3, we perform the wet cleaning and deacidification of the centerfold using my express method for wet cleaning on the hobby mat, after which we perform the archival tear seal with Japanese paper and methyl cellulose on the one inch rip in the centerfold wrap and began the drying and cold press operations. In episode 4, we trim the excess Tengujo paper from the cover and centerfold and restored the gloss to the large area on the back cover that was looking dull prior to our wet cleaning. If you want to watch any of those episodes before watching this one, just follow the link to the playlist for this project. Today, we are going to reassemble this comic book, replace the staples, and refold it to prepare it for the final press. But, before we get to our main topic, I want to Thank everyone for helping us achieve our goal of 1,000 subscribers. That triggered our giveaway of this copy of Star Wars No. 1 in CGC 7.5 with white pages. Published in 1977, this is the first appearance of Luke, Leia, Vader, R2, 3PO, and a host of others as well as the first cover appearance of Obi-Wan and Han Solo. The drawing will be on September 29th so it's not too late to qualify to win. Just make sure you're subscribed to the channel and follow the link over to that video to comment there for a chance to win. All right, let's get to work. As ever, start off with clean and dry hands. You may recall that last video, we spent a lot of time making sure that this stack was perfectly aligned. So this is all the cover and all of the wraps in order and I've already spent a lot of time making sure everything's aligned I'm double checking where my holes are and I have just a regular needle and I'm gonna replace the holes in the top staple and do the same here for the bottom staple again I'm gonna double check the edges all four multiple times it's the old measure twice cut once kind of adage from carpentry 
I double check, triple check, quadruple check all the edges before I place these holes for the staples. They should be reinforcing the existing holes. Here I have the staples labeled top and bottom, preserved which one's which, and preserved orientation. And here's why. That bottom staple, the upper arm, is very short. And it will have made an impression in the paper, and we want to preserve that. We would like to leave as few pieces of evidence of our passing as possible. We want to have a nice light touch as conservators. Very gentle here. I'm just basically kind of gently probing with the staple arm. If you use any force beyond that, you will enlarge the holes, you will tear the paper ever so slightly more than it was torn when the original holes were made when this staple was originally inserted in, during the manufacturing process. So it's a very gentle probing. I have with my left hand my fingers immediately underneath where I'm trying to press this staple arm through and then obviously with my right hand I'm manipulating the staple. And it takes time. It's tedious, and in fact, with this short sort of nub arm, I'm struggling here. I know that I have the staple in the right place, and I know I have the paper in the right place, because the longer arm is all the way through. But I don't want to force the issue with this short arm. And sometimes the holes for the staples can almost seem like they're not the correct distance apart. Here I'm just going to make sure that the cover is perfectly aligned with the rest of the wraps. And then I decided, you know what, I have the one long arm in. I know that the bottom is where it needs to be. Let's see if I can place the top staple now. And I'll come back and deal with the, the short nub arm after I have the top staple placed. Let's give that a try. So on the bottom I have the long arm placed and I'm just going to see what I can get done here at the top with the other staple now that I know the paper is pretty close to fixed. Obviously with one only one hole fixed you can rotate all of the wraps, right? So I'm going to keep checking and I'm going to keep that top edge aligned. That's what I'm doing with my left hand now. Just ensuring it's perfectly aligned. Pinching it. And then again, gently probing with the staple. Putting just a little bit of pressure with my left thumb there. And with the fingers of my left hand, feeling the back of those holes. I've mentioned before that when the staples are not perfectly aligned with the fold in the comic, it's a little bit more challenging to replace the staples. I'm not entirely sure why that is, but it seems to be the case. Patience is the name of the game here, and top staples in. Now that the top staples in, I'm going to flip the book over and again sextuple, heptuple check. Everything's aligned perfectly. I like to make sure that the staple is perfectly perpendicular, both of them and then double check all the paper again because sometimes you can get the paper aligned perfectly and that staple is off at a funky angle and then when you pull the staple arms erect it shifts the paper so really a lot of moving parts here and like anything the staple placement is sort of the foundation of the whole book so all the prep here 
getting it right is worth it. Here I have my Delrin block with a tiny hole drilled in it. And I'm just going to bend one arm over to fix the paper in place and go back now and deal with this short arm on the bottom staple. And my hope is that now that everything's really well aligned, there really aren't too many degrees of freedom here, and we ought to be able to find this hole with relative ease, which was the case. And now we're in. I really need to pinch this one well because that staple arm is so short, it really barely goes through the whole stack. So I'm going to definitely keep it pinched while I flip the wraps over. And now I'm ready to make a last check on the alignment of all the pages. And it's mostly fixed now, so really we just need to make sure that the bottom hasn't shifted left or right too much. And again, keep those arms of the staple vertical, perpendicular to the horizontal plane here. And there's our short arm. Now I'll get the capable staple tool and fix the lower arm on the upper staple in place while I bend down the upper arm. And then similarly, I'll fix the short arm, the upper arm here, and I'll place the lower arm of the lower staple in place. And you heard me say it before, but with my finger there, I'm guiding that staple arm right down into the original impression that's been left since the day of manufacture. Now I have a beautiful book back together, but doesn't have quite a nice fold yet, like it left the manufacturing line. So I've gone ahead and placed it in a humidity box. And now we'll prep for replacing the fold in this comic book. I have my tack iron, which I like to put at about two and a half. And then I have this granite block, which is repurposed from a kitchen remodel. And I use that just to demonstrate better for you how I do this method. Here's my backer board with cutouts for the staples relief. I'm going to place it just to the right of the actual place where I want the crease because we need space for the paper. And you've seen me before do this with a magazine backer board. And again, this comic or these wraps just came out of my humidity box. It's slightly better to do it with a regular size backer board, as you can see here, because then you can see not only that the wraps front and back edge align perfectly, but also that they align well with each other. Now I'm starting off with the tack iron. Again here, I've pulled those pages over with my left hand and pinched them against the granite so that nothing can move except that right edge as I create the fold. And this is just ever so gentle touch. I'm just sort of caressing the book. I have a piece of SRP between my tack iron and the book. And I'm just very gently brushing against the page, putting a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure and allowing it to just relax back down into the fold that it originally had when it left the manufacturing press. Remember, this comic book had a rather severe spine roll when it came to us, so we need to correct that with this process here. Having started to establish it, I'll double check the edges, flip it over, put the SRP back on top. I'm pinching it with my left hand now to keep the orientation that I've set with my hand by pulling it and aligning everything well. And now I'm going to use slightly more pressure. 
still not much this is our first pass with heat on the front of the cover there just isn't a need for a lot of pressure Now you see I'm putting a little bit more into it, a little bit more heat and a little bit more pressure. And that fold is almost there. It's essentially where we need it. And now we can reinforce it with a little bit more pressure and heat. So now I'm going to go ahead and actually push down and I'm going to dwell in one spot. You can see just by like the finger on top of the tack iron is a little bit white where I'm pushing, right? Like they say, when you white knuckle, when you drive, for example, when you're really squeezing the steering wheel, you can read how much pressure I'm putting in just by the color of my knuckles, which is kind of a neat little physiologic hack and satisfied that the fold is where I want it. I turn my tack iron off and this book is ready for final press. With the book back together, let's wrap up this episode here and next episode we'll wrap up this project. I'll show you the final press and the results with lots of detailed before and after pictures, which I know is the big payoff for everyone. Most of the materials I use for comic book conservation are available from Amazon in the affiliate links in the description if you need any of them for your own conservation projects. If you enjoyed this video, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, take care of one another.